or miscellaneous. Um, it was going to be called the fuel pump run fuel pump continuously. So what I've done here in this particular car, because it's a returnless fuel system and it has a feed line ran from the firewall, the hard line coming at the firewall, ran to the fuel rail. So it was a, some kind of a conversion that someone has done on the car previous to uh, us owning the car that had a number six fuel line. So I simply took the number six fuel line off the feed line going into the rail and I used a male to male union connector and then I connected another dash six hose on the other side of that and I ran that into a five gallon empty pail. And I went and I ran the fuel pump continuously. So I just turned the ignition key on and I let the fuel pump run all of the fuel out. Then I just put the five gallons of ethanol in the fuel tank, which we're going to find here. Um, it gave us about 50% ethanol content. So we're going to see right here, I did cycle the key a whole bunch of times and um, I did let the engine run just for a, a minute or two, just so the fuel could circulate in the tank and get its way up to the rail. The, the flex fuel sensor is mounted on the feed line. So we're finding that we're at 50% ethanol content. Now, the ethanol that I'm using is a winter blend ethanol. So we're not going to be able to get up to something like 70, 80, 90% ethanol with what's coming from the pump. It was probably 60, 70% already in terms of the ethanol content. I didn't measure it beforehand, uh, but when we're mixing it with whatever the residual petrol fuel is in the tank, it dilutes it considerably. So now we're finding we're at 50% ethanol. So if we pay attention back into our details here under our flex fuel option, we are gonna find that we're adding a certain percentage of fuel uh, somewhere between 35 and 60. Now these are the default values that KPRO has in the file. These do work fairly well, so we'll just see if we can run those, if, see what, what if any adjustments need to be made. And then here under the ignition compensation open loop, we're gonna find we're gonna add anywhere, but, well, between 35 and 60% ethanol, between two to four degrees. We're likely to be adding right around three to three and a half degrees of timing from where we found ourselves at on petrol fuel. So we'll see what that does in terms of the power band. Now, the other thing that I did change and update was the maximum engine speed for updating at 2000 RPM, just so that if we're trying to drive this part throttle, it is going to be updating as the ethanol is mixing in the system. So I did lower that down here to 2000 RPM. With a returnless system like this, you could probably even have this at something like 1000 RPM. There's always going to be fuel flow going through the ethanol content sensor. If you have a return style system and the flex fuel sensor is mounted on the return line, which is pretty traditional, we'll find that whatever is consumed through the fuel rail and the fuel injectors, the ethanol content sensor is essentially going to be registering whatever that fuel flow rate that is bypassed out of the rail going into the return line back to the tank. The problem is going to be if you have a lot of power production out of your engine, you're going to need a lot of fuel flow rate. You might be using the majority of the fuel flow rate through the injectors and putting it into the engine at higher boost, higher load situations, and not much might be running through the return line. You're not bringing a lot back to the return from the to the tank. And therefore, the flex fuel sensor can be erratic in its reading when it's mounted on the return line. So we're finding here that uh, the maximum engine speed for update, if I set it to something like 1,000 for returnless, that's fine. If you're on a return system, you might want to set that to something like three or 4,000. That way it clamps it and it doesn't allow that flex fuel sensor to vary or to read uh, or change around a lot from what you would normally find at idle and part throttle conditions. So I dropped this down a little bit just so it's able to mix and read the new mixture content in our system here, there's always fuel getting pumped in the feed line into the fuel rail. So it's not a concern of the ethanol content varying around and causing erratic fueling and spark delivery. So we have uh, set our conditions here. Let's go ahead and just fire it off real quick here. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.